Hi, think of this as your morning up to speed wrap before the day picks up. Nine opposition parties boycotted the Rajya Sabha proceedings yesterday, which along with COVID-19 meant that the upper house was mostly empty. But the proceedings went on and nine bills were passed. It was a silent room with a handful of eyes. The boycott happened because the house adopted a resolution through a voice vote to formally suspend eight MPs who were suspended by the chairman of the Rajya Sabha for all that ruckus on Sunday on the farm bills. Now the split in the house, so to speak, happened over three agriculture reform bills. Less glamorous than all that political drama, but definitely newsworthy. You know, two of those farm bills were passed on Sunday and one, the Essential Commodities Amendment Bill, was passed yesterday. That essentially removes cereals, pulses, oil seeds, onions and potatoes from the list of essential commodities. So no stock limits of storing these commodities except in extreme situations. Now the big picture and the many questions that remain unanswered on both sides. And we've done a series of interviews and deep background with a whole host of experts. Number one, even those who support the bills are surprised by this bulldozing. Number two, those against the bills still need to explain better. Can the government really be buying all that produce at a profit to the farmer? I think which brings us to number three. It's a demand we've heard really for all our interviewees. The demand for MSP to be legal. That looks impossible for now. And as T.R. Vivek, an independent journalist, said in one of his tweets that I read, how is it okay that a section of farmers will grow water guzzling rice, as he writes, for no real ecological and economic reason and yet benefit from government procurement, which results in massive losses to the government? Um, there is still a lot to unpack and a lot to understand here. I agree. But let's move ahead. There has been more happening in Parliament new versions of three labor codes are being discussed in the Lok Sabha. Let me simplify this for the sake of this wrap. The government is planning to unify the several different laws that are related to the regulation of labor, 29 at least, into four codes. Now, one of these was passed last year by parliament. Three more were tabled, but that session was adjourned. Now, in the current session, the Labour Ministry has withdrawn those three bills and tabled three new ones instead. It's claiming it's taken this entire year to hold consultation with stakeholders, send the bills to a standing committee and then actually redraft them. The opposition MPs are saying that these bills are completely changed, including the preamble in one of them. They're asking for at least a few days to read these bills. Now, why is this important? While the three labor bills actually propose to increase the ambit of social security by including gig workers and interstate migrant workers, they're also suggesting measures that allow employers to hire and fire workers in factories with below 300 employees without government permission. Now, earlier this number was 100. Another aspect is saying companies with less than 300 employees can introduce any service conditions without actually furnishing a formal standing order. There is one more concern that's come up in Parliament as well. No special provisions to safeguard the rights of women workers and the unorganized sector. Now remember, these are matters that will soon be tabled in the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha. What happens if the house is empty again? What happens if these pass without so much as one dissent on the record? I'll leave you with that thought, but another bill you should know about is the Manual Scavengers Rehabilitation Bill. The text of that bill is not in public domain, so our best guess is a document by the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment that was released in March. It said 882 people had died while engaged in sanitation work and manual scavenging, which was proof that the 2013 act that prohibits manual scavenging had failed and needed an upgrade with a stress on technology, safety and compensation. All good, I'd say. Remember, this is a caste based practice. Manual scavengers are usually from caste groups that are relegated to the bottom of the caste hierarchy. That document by the ministry didn't say too much about it. The bill has also not gone through the mandatory 30 day multilingual public consultation process. 
And finally, a piece of legislation very much in the news, the Foreign Contribution Regulation Amendment Bill or the FCRA that was tabled in the Lok Sabha on Sunday. And that bill is seeking to do a few things. Number one, prohibit public servants from receiving any foreign funding. Number two, reducing the use of foreign funds to meet administrative costs by NGOs from the existing 50% to 20%. That bill is also saying that suppose an NGO does get FCRA approval and then if the government for any reason believes the funds are being misused, it can direct the NGO to stop using any remaining foreign funds and foreign funds once received can't be further transferred, which means NGOs who work by, let's say, further distributing the funds to smaller organizations at the ground level can't do that anymore. The criticism for this bill, that it can be misused to curtail civil society organizations. In fact, many of them have called the proposed FCRA amendments a fatal blow to civil society work. I'll end here. I know it's been a long list, but all of it newsworthy my name is Anupa Bosley and I do news worthy of your time. You know what happens at the end? Just a request, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on Instagram where our handle is newsworthy with AB. From our entire team here, thank you for your time.